Hello. In this Excel tutorial video for Chem 1B, we'll be working up the data from Experiment 16. Remember that you need to know how to do all these calculations by hand for your quizzes. I've already entered the data into the Excel spreadsheet. You'll note that I've included the stock concentrations of the I3- solution and the potassium iodide solution. I've had the student enter the milliliters of the I3- they added from the burette and the milliliters of Ki they've added. I'm going to go ahead and change these so that they're all displaying the proper significant figures. They've also entered the percent transmittance values. Now as you enter these, be careful. You need to keep track of how Excel is reading this. When the percent symbol shows up in the cell, Excel sees this number is 0.162 instead of 16.2. And that's going to be important when we calculate the absorbance. But let's start by calculating the concentration of I3-. This is a simple dilution calculation. It's the volume of I3- minus that I've added multiplied by the concentration, and that's going to give me something like moles, and then I divide by the diluted volume. And the diluted volume in this case is the volume of I3- minus plus the volume of Ki. And I can go ahead and, and copy that down, and I'm getting some errors. The thing I've missed here is I've forgotten to make the stock concentration an absolute cell reference. I put the cursor in that value and then hit F4 to toggle. Let's try copying this down again. Okay, that's going to be my X data for this calibration curve plot. My Y data is absorbance because the absorbance is linear with concentration. The percent transmittance is not. Absorbance is equal to the minus log of the percent transmittance. Now, if <coughs> If I'm using this in decimal form, which is when it has the percent symbol in there, I can just use the cell. If I have it so it's 16.2 without that percent symbol in the cell, I would need to divide by 100. And I get absorbance values ranging from 0.79 down to 0 in this, in this case for this data. The slope, I use the slope function, equals slope, open parentheses, drag over the y values, comma, drag over the x values, close parentheses, enter. That's the slope of the line. The intercept is the intercept function. Drag over the y's, drag over the x's. And I'm going to calculate a fit line here before I plot my data so it plots very easily. But this is just going to be equal to y is equal to m, which was the slope, as an absolute cell reference, times the x data for that point plus the intercept, again, as an absolute cell reference, and I can copy it down. If I select the X and Y data and my fit line, use the chart wizard, XY scatter, I get a data plot that looks pretty good. I'm going to enter a title as my um, calibration data, let's say. The X values in this case were the concentration of I3 minus, and the Y values were absorbance. I'm going to turn off the grid lines and the legend as they're not really appropriate for this plot, and hit finish. Now, I can get rid of that gray background by selecting it and hitting the delete key. I want to move this plot so it goes from 0 to 0.9 and it doesn't show this axis below that. To do that, I'm going to right click on the axis, format axis. Under the scale tab, I can manually change the minimum of that axis to 0. That makes it look a little nicer. The last thing is my pet peeve is that fit lines do not have data points. And getting rid of those data points, and I'm going to change it so the color is the same as the other line, but you want to make sure you have a line and no markers for this. And in this way, my data has points 
but no line connecting them, and the best fit through those points is a line with no points of its own. And so that looks pretty good for the calibration plot. In the next video, we'll use this calibration plot in our calculations of how to convert our measurements of the absorbance at different temperatures of the saturated barium iodate solution into equilibrium constants, the enthalpy and entropy of that reaction, and the delta G for the reaction at each temperature.